come together this morning, Father, for uh, study your word on the resurrection. And we pray, Father, for all our members who are here and ones who are not. And we pray for the ones who are bereaved, Father. We lift up to you, uh, Brother Jones' family, uh, Brother Thomas and his family, and others who have lost ones, lost loved ones, Father. We just pray that you just comfort them and let them know, Father, that uh, God is not dead, that he is still alive, and that they will be with him, Father. We pray for your guidance, Father, as we go into your word. We just pray, Father, that uh, um, hearts and minds be open, Father. And as we come away from this, Father, we, we may experience something or learn something we have overlooked through the years, Father. So be with uh, our facilitator, Brother Joe, and also be with the ones who participate, Father, because they have important inputs into what we are doing here today. So bless us as we go in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you for that prayer. So here we are again, getting ready to get into the Lord's Word. And um, last week we kind of got cut off abruptly before we cleared up a few things, but um, we're back. It seemed like technology is working with us this week. For some reason it didn't want us to close out our normal way last week, but uh, we managed to get through the lesson, and the technology worked pretty fair. And so, again, if you're not speaking, kind of turn your microphone off until the time of reading. And so we're in the book of Luke again this week, our fifth section on this quarter, and it would be our 18th section overall that we've been going through Luke. And last week we were closing out when they were, uh, like I said, the technology dropped off, and that was like we were dealing with the triumphant entry and how Jesus had came into, started his descent down to Jerusalem. And this week we're jumped ahead a few chapters up until the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And uh, this, in the lesson, is titled Resurrected. And this is appropriate title for this happy Easter Sunday because he has risen indeed. And the resurrection is the, um, how should I say, separates Christianity from all other religions in the fact that Christianity has a living God, Savior, and Spirit to guide us and give us a hope in a future, whereas the other religions, they don't do that. And it also gives us a Savior for all men. And that's the uniqueness of our Christianity, a born, living, sinless, crucified, uh, resurrected, defeating old death, uh, Savior. And that's the most important news ever reported. As you see in this lesson a little bit later on, how the sisters ran from the tomb to give this very important news. He lives. And He's living for us right now in preparing a place for us all. And so as we go into there, we can always look at that question right under the first part on our, on our books on page 46 is what's the diff what difference does Jesus' resurrection make in your life today? And then we have a hope in the future. And uh, that uh, if it wasn't an empty tomb, as you could see in this lesson today, the disciples and the followers of Jesus may have been scattered, but the empty tomb brought it all back together. And so, and as we try to understand a little bit more about this, 
we're going to see in the lesson today that uh, God did all the work and everything. It was no man could take claim for these great things. And then um, we're going to go on to another stuff too about how after the Sabbath day that Jesus was raised on that first day, which is known as Sunday now. But before that, it was the Sabbath day, and, and it became Sunday because it was the first day that he raised the living to, come, to be the first one to come from the dead. And we're going to cover a little bit more about that. And it's going to be found in, uh, I think it's uh, Colossians, or, or first, yeah, Colossians 1 18. And then how he became the head, the body, and the firstborn of the dead. And so all that is in this lesson today about the the empty tomb. And um, so we're going to cover those things as well. So but we're going to go on and we're going to read this morning. We're going to cross-reference, I think, uh, three of the Gospels that tell this same story. But each one tells it a little differently. Like we're going to deal with Luke in our version today, and then we're going to compare two other ones with it as well. So, but any more, we're going to have our, our reader today come up on the first portion of it is the return. And remember, the part of the return is like you can only return if you've been there before. So we're going to pay attention to who is returning here today in this lesson and take a, 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 a pay kind of attention to the uh when he's reading this listen to the plan as the women head towards the tomb and so our day, reader today is david Forsyth, and he's going to read the first couple of verses which are um, the book fell on the floor. David, you have it. Let's, let's read those verses right there as you return. Luke okay. 24, 1 and 5. All right. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the tomb, bringing the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. They went in but did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men stood by them in dazzling clothes. So the women were terrified and bowed down to the ground. Lord, add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Now you see how Luke is talking to, um, basically, Luke's writing is dealing basically with the humanity of the son of man. Jesus is a a unique son of man, and and he's a human being. And so he's talking to it how the ladies had, uh, as we did back in, brought to our, our attention way back in September, I mean, um, February earlier this year in our lesson when they were walking through the field and taking grain on the Sabbath day. And it was brought to our contention that, I think Brother brought to our attention that the passion versus compassion. And so we see right here that the ladies returned to the tomb because of their passion. But not only that, they, the reason they returned was because of their compassion to prepare the body for the Lord. And so... Luke is bringing us that way. And then I had Brother Tab Scott to prepare a little bit farther on before this. And John, his take on this, if Brother Tab Scott would read that, John 20, I think it's 11 through 18. Just John 20, 11. Uh, all right, brother. I'm gonna start at I'm gonna start at ten. Okay. Uh, John ten twenty ten through eighteen. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, 
she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this time, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brother, brothers and tell them I am returning to my father and your father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene went, in, went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Thank you for the reading and the hearing of the Lord's word. Now, I had him read that portion because, again, we're looking at Jesus in this time, in that period of time, where and we have John's account, then we also have Luke's account, even though John's account read all the way through the whole lesson that Brother Tab Scott just read. Uh, we're going to navigate through Luke, though, which is, He's dealing with the humanity of Jesus, but I had him read all of uh, John because that's the deity of Jesus saying that he was God and that with him fulfilling God's plan because in the back in the beginning, I think our Christian faith, as Brother Charles brought to our attention a couple of weeks back, that our whole Christian faith is based on faith. All the way back, he pointed back to Genesis, you know, let there be light, all the way back to there. And so our Bible is our light to the Christian walk. And so that's why I want to read these verses to show that the people were looking at how the light of the time that they were living in, how they viewed Jesus. And even we go back to Matthew, he viewed Jesus as a king, and he was, Matthew was basically talking to the Jews, basically saying he had a message for the Jews, about the Jews, giving the Jews a king. And so all three of these had different approaches to the same message, which ours, though, is based on the humanity side of it, and basically how he was seeking to save and to guide everyone through a uh, way of uh, preparing them all for this uh, <clears throat> Christianity life that they were going to have to fulfill and getting them prepared for the commitment and um, accountability that they had to have for following his word. So back where David had read earlier in the verses, he was talking about the first day. And basically the first day um, after the Passover, which back in those days, the Passover was the Sabbath, was the Sabbath was a Saturday. And so the Passover, they had, you know, hung Jesus earlier that week, three days he was in the earth. And then now this first day, this represents the empty tomb represents the fulfillment 
of God's promise for the Savior. So this first day, that would take us back to, I was talking about it earlier, uh, Colossians 1.18, where this first day Jesus came up victoriously out of the grave. This was the whole thing that Christianity is based on, that we have a living Savior. And he was the firstborn of a virgin. He was the first uh, to be raised from the dead. And, and what they mean by the firstborn from the dead is that we saw in other miracles that people had died, Lazarus and other ones, and been brought back to life. But they died again. But Jesus arose, left the empty tomb, and lived and prepared a place for us who are believers and have faith in the Christianity religion and faith in Jesus Christ and the Lord and our Savior and be guided by the Holy Spirit. So they went early in the morning to the tomb, we, and then they found the stone rolled away. And different counts of this, uh, some gospels say an angel rolled it away, but Luke's saying they just found it empty. And they went in and didn't find the body. And while they were perplexed, while they were still standing around there, the angel came to them, and they were all afraid. And so uh, that was, uh, and then when they saw the angel, they bowed down and started trying to worship the angel. But again, you know, God only alone is the only one that we should be worshiping. And so we're going to go to our question on this section right here is why is it hard for believers to accept Jesus' uh, difficult saying and how does Jesus' promise encourage us during difficult days? Did I get ahead of myself? Wait a minute. Did I go? Yeah, I think I did the question on the wrong. I mean, that's the wrong section. It's the, why did the women expect why did the women expect to encounter a closed tomb, and how should we respond to the empty tomb? Why did the women expect a closed tomb, and why should we, and how should we respond to the empty tomb? Anyone? I, I yeah. Think I Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I would think that from a human standpoint, all of us, even though he was preaching to his disciples, he was preaching to the women that he would ra he would raise again, certainly the human mind is saying, yeah, I know. Uh, they're thinking he's gone. And, and once a person dies on this side of the world, as far as a human mind goes, we know that that's the end. Uh, that person is not coming back again. Um, so when he was telling them about about he was going to come back in three days, they they had mixed messages on that. They didn't really understand. So when they were going to the tomb that morning, I'm sure as they helped prepare the body um, and helped, you know, with um, – going to the cross and everything, they saw the actual death of Christ. And so naturally, in a human mind, they're saying, okay, um, he should still be there because, you know, they, they sealed it, they put a big rock in front of it and everything. Now, from from the other standpoint, we now can, can, as they say, put all of our hope in Christ. We have hope because we know that the body is now gone. And they can't explain it. A lot of people have tried to explain it. But we know that he told us that he was going to be raised again, and he did it. Um, and so all hope is in, in him, and it has been um, sustained at this point and will always be. That's our hope. We know that he lives because where's the body? Where is he? And he did exactly what he said he was going to do. And that's our, our mind that we have to get over our human minds and, and put on our, our sanctified, as they say, minds and understand that this is a godly thing. 
But man, we can't explain that thing. And that's why they were looking for a body to still be there. Very good. Mm. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, I, I agree with everything that uh, Brother Charles has said. And, uh, you know, while what? Jesus was on earth yeah, and uh, when he was on the cross, uh, I think his followers actually expected him to call the angels and fire from heaven. You know, he didn't do that. So when he was buried, they, I mean, you know, they felt that was it, you know. He, I mean, he healed the blind, uh, he did a lot of miracles, so they were expecting a miracle then. So once he was buried, they were not expecting anything uh, more than that. But they forgot, just like we today, now, we read scripture, and many times we forget the promises that God has made to us, okay? It's only after. Maybe God has answered our prayers that we remember that, oh yeah, God said he would never leave us or forsake us. So the ladies went down there that early morning thinking that, you know, the stone would be there because they said, who will roll it away for us? And um, so uh, they were expecting Jesus to be there because they prepared all the spices and everything to give the final rites. So they were surprised when they got there and found that the body was gone. And like Charles said, there's no explanation other than the resurrection, uh, which is the hallmark of Christians. So for us, that is hope, you know. So remember the Bible says we walk by what? By faith, not by sight, you know. So we are reminded again that, yes, we don't see everything, but God sees everything, you know. And uh, Jesus has gone back to heaven, like he told uh, the women and his followers. So they started recalling when it was becoming clear to them that he was resurrected because the disciples also went there to check it out and they found that that was true. And also the angels who were by the tomb also affirmed that Jesus was resurrected. Very good. Good point about the angels were right there pronouncing it. And that is the good thing about it's showing the divineness of the messenger and God used messengers throughout his message in Luke that we've been studying, the announcement of John the Baptist, the announcement of the birth of Jesus, and throughout Old Testament as well. But, again, the unique thing is this is the first day after the Passover. And I've, you know, I've been listening and studying with people over the years, and I didn't realize until maybe earlier this week that, a lot of brothers and sisters that I've talked with over Christianity over the years really didn't know the significance of Passover. And I was like, wow, I mean, you quote all these scriptures, you're doing all these Christian works, but really didn't know the meaning of Passover. And I thought that was kind of odd. And then it was just on Tuesday of this week while I was doing my reading and listening, that Brother Yusuf on the radio was mm -hmm. talking about the Passover. Uh -huh. And he was dealing with uh, Luke 22, starting at 14, that Jesus brought his disciples, and he did the Passover. He compared the Passover, the first Passover, and the Last Supper was proclaimed to be the last Passover. And Jesus had to bring his disciples in there. And the two Passovers uh, were very uh, unique in their vote way that they were used. The first Passover, which was the one back in Egypt, for mm -hmm. they didn't understand that the Passover feast was only in response and relating back to, like, we have communion now, but back then it was the Passover relating to the Egypt, uh, Israelites being brought out of Egypt and the putting the blood on the post. And then the first Passover was the blood on the post was to say that they were children of God, uh, you know, followers of, over. And then at that first time, the fair, God had said that the firstborn of everything, animal, creature, man, woman, whatever, was going to die. And so what happened was 
the first Passover, you a sacrifice had to be made. And so the second Passover that Jesus was telling them in Luke 22 was the uh, 2214 was he was saying that this second Passover would be the uh, cross and the empty tomb. And Jesus paid the price for everyone with his death. And then the first Passover went back to the firstborn had to die. And Jesus died once for all. And the first Passover delivered the Egyptians from Pharaoh. And Jesus delivers us into being sons of God. And it goes on. He went on and on and on and went with that. And so it was basically the Passover fulfilled the scripture to bring us up to this point where Jesus became the firstborn from the tomb. Which is, uh, and he, when he raised up from the tomb, he became the head of the body and the mm-hmm. firstborn and to all things and to all eternity to give us that hope. So anyway, I just wanted to uh, put a little bit on that Passover before we went on to our next session talking about the remembrance because Jesus had promised all these things were going to happen at this past, this last Passover that he had with them. And so they should have, the disciples should have knew this. And his followers, they they might not, I don't know if the women, I don't think the women were in the upper room, but I'm sure he <laughs> shared this information with these folks about him being raised up on the third day. He said that in front of the scribes and the Pharisees, right, that, the nurse stone from this temple will fall down, but I'll be raised in three days. He made that statement. So they all knew his words, but they, at this point, when they went back to the tomb looking for that body, it hadn't struck them yet. And so that's where they were at that point. But now they're going to go into the remembrance part, which David is going to read now, which is going to be um, Luke 5 through 7. All right. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? asked the man. He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, Mm -hmm. It is necessary that the Son of Man be betrayed into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and rise on the third day. Okay, thank you for the reading and the hearing of his word. And so again, uh, here we are, and this is the portion in John, and right here too, we are seeing the deity right now, because he's using these divine messengers to make these announcements. And what he's saying is like, you're looking for the living among the dead. You know, and they hadn't came to the reality yet that he has risen yet. And so, you know, and, and, and then where were the disciples at at this time? You know, it's like the ladies returned. The men, where were they at at this time? You know, the ladies returned. The men don't even know where the body of Jesus is. You know, is this what they're saying? Because they don't say anything about the men at this point, but then the the angel or the men there uh, uh, brought to their attention, he is risen, remember, he told them, now think back, you know, what he told you back in Galilee, where he started his ministry at, way back then. Think back what he's been telling you all this time that he's going to raise up from the dead. He's going to defeat it. But I guess it was, you know, I don't know. That would be hard to see because, like, you know, we don't, we don't see that every day. They have never seen that. Well, they might have seen it raising Lazarus. But, you know, it's just they probably the events of the time being Jesus being taken, having a mock trial, crucified, 
and things were just happening fast, and then the, they were probably fear was upon them all. What are we going to do now that our leader is gone? You know, they were like sheep scattered astray, going all different ways. The men went one way. The women here in this example, I'm going to give them all the credit, that they were like faithful. They were, uh, what would we say, what was the word? Compassionate, because they not only wanted to know where the body was, for they can do their compassionate part of, like the brother was saying, put the, oils and embalmed the body. They didn't get to do it because it, it would have interfered with the Passover festival. And you know, these religious leaders were not going to let nothing get in the way of their festivals. But so the women followed Joseph when he buried Jesus's body so that they could return. And then here they are. The angel is telling them now they, that they return that, uh, you know, remember what he told you? that it was necessary for him to be betrayed, be turned over into the hands and be crucified and raised on the third day. And so there they were right there at the tomb, listening to the angel. They were fear, afraid, amazed. A whole bunch of things were going on. But the question is, why is it hard for believers to accept Jesus' difficult sayings? How does Jesus promise, encourage us during difficult days, remembering what Jesus has promised us. How is it difficult for believers? Can we also, uh, also, Brother Joe, mm -hmm. I, I think it's credible, credible to the women. They knew that the, the uh, cave was sealed. Mm -hmm. And they made these preparations to go and do the anointing, and they didn't know how they were going to get the stone rolled away. But mm -hmm. they didn't let they didn't let that deter them because they were involved. They knew what they they had to do. They knew what their passion was for the Savior. So they said, "Hey, we're going anyway." Amen. But they said, so "Who who's going to roll? We don't know, but we're going." Amen. And I think that's credible to, 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 to their faith. Yeah. Very good. Anyone else? This is very... I, I feel like those women, this is Sister Galloway, um, you know, they were so grief-stricken. I mean, if you've ever lost anyone... You know, it's it's like an assault on your mind, you know, and and the and you know what all what they witnessed Jesus going through, being tortured and you know um, mistreated on the cross. They were just so grief stricken, and they were just carrying out the process of you know their ritual and you know as a way of mourning and. You know, what grief does to the mind, you know, is, uh, you know, I just don't know, but I just know that um, God knew, he knew what they were going to be like, you know, what, you know, that they wouldn't remember. Mm -hmm. And so that, you know, that's why those angels were there to bring them in remembrance. This is just my humble opinion speaking. Um, but yeah, that's a good point. I, I thought people were positioned. I thought they were guards positioned by the stones or something. I thought that's when I did that. But anyway, that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Galloway. Anyone else? Good morning and, and, and blessed, uh, Resurrection Day. This is Sister Elaine. Um, I believe uh, because we wrestle with our flesh, uh, which is connected to our emotion and our senses, we momentarily forget uh, because even in things that we are experiencing in our daily lives, we momentarily forget and we focus on the pain and what we are enduring at that moment. But once we 
do is, I think it's Psalms 46.10, say, be still. You have to come to a point to where you take a deep breath, be still, look up, and allow the Holy Spirit to then speak to, as the sister was saying, speak to your mind and your heart, which is where the Holy Spirit uh, uh, speaks to us through. Once you then allow the Holy Spirit to govern your heart and mind, if you've been spending time with the Master, he will then uh, bring to your mind, you will recall what he promised. And at that point, you can begin to then have resolve and have the assurance and know that all will be well with your soul. Very good. I like the way you pointed that back to the scriptures, pointing all those things out to us in, in our time. And that's what we have to do. You know, uh, our Bible is more or less like our guide. And, um, and a lot of times when we get lost in grief and other things, um, what these sisters were doing, we have to go back, the sister was saying, we have to go back to, in that brief time, we have to go back, and even that's looking to the Word, looking to the Holy Spirit to guide us and lead us. If we submit to that thing, that's the most important thing. And even though we're, they were in grief, they still submitted to their faithfulness and led on back to the tomb like the brother was saying. They didn't know how the stone was going to get removed. They just went there on their faith that things were going to happen. And then the deity of God put the uh, angels there to roll back the tomb, you know, I mean the stone. And so that's it's all about the faith of the Christianity. It's all about, like we said earlier, it's all Christianity is a, faith, a faith-based religion faith in Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the Father in heaven to get us through these difficult times, you know, and it even also to get us through the good times as well. And because, like, this empty tomb is good, the good news of the gospel, but they hadn't really conceived that idea yet. So anyone else want to say anything else about believers accepting the difficult sayings of the Lord and the promises during these difficult times? If not, we will go on to the report part. This is the part where in Luke 24, 8 through 12. All right, Eight. we are. Mm -hmm. And they remembered his words. Returning from the tomb, they reported all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Mary Magdalene, Jonah, Mary, the mother of James, the other women with them, were telling the apostles these things. But these words seemed like nonsense to them, and they did not believe the women. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. When he stooped to look in, he saw only the linen clothes. So he went away amazed at what had happened. Bless the reading and the hearing of the Lord's word. So they pointed out quite a few women's name in this book, didn't they? Mary, yeah. <laughs> Mary Magdalene, Jonas, Mary, and the mother of James. And so, again, I pointed out earlier, where the fellas at? You know, and then, uh, but this is the part where their obedience fall into place. Because what was the last thing that uh, Brother Tapscott read in that John um, 20, 
10 through 18 was, go and tell those fellas that I rose, you know, and then they're over here, and we see it in our book right here, the fellas over there not believing this. Oh, them women don't know what they're talking about. That can't be true. And can you see them sitting around there and, 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 and debating and whether or not it's true or not, but our good old friend, foot and mouth Peter, what's he do? <laughs> he takes off. He's going to go over there and find out for himself. And they go over there. Now, the unique thing about this is, is that in John's gospel, uh, they put all the men over there before this right here. How am I trying to say it now? They put the men there. The women had did all these other things where we talked about up to this point where the woman went, told the men, they came, the men left, and the woman dwelled there after everybody had left away. She still was there trying to figure out what does this empty tomb mean. And that's when she looked over, not in our Luke gospel, but in the John gospel, she looked over and saw the gardener, which was the Lord. Right? And right. then she started talking to him. The angel spoke to her first. Then she looked and saw the gardener. And then she said, what you do with him? And you know what you do with him? And then he <laughs> called her by name. Then her eyes were open. Mm -hmm. right? And then she understood that God, that, that it was Jesus. Mm. And so... There it is because she had the what what this is pointing to is that like she did not only have a, a she did not only she was just so confused and everything that she just stayed there and hung around and and just was trying to figure out what was going on and the Lord provided her the insight that she needed to go out and tell the world and she didn't waste any time she got the word from the Lord, and immediately, quickly, she took off and went back to the disciples to tell them that Jesus said to meet him at Galilee, wherever he had started his ministry at. Remember in Galilee when he opened the book in the temple and read the part about the Son of Man? You see it right now for Scripture is fulfilled today. And when his first reading, and so... There, the woman was faithful to do what she was dead. She remembered, she reported, and she returned, remembered, and reported. And so there, we have it all. And, and, and the bottom line on this one is, why do you think the disciples had such a difficult time believing the woman's testimony? And how can you share this good news with someone this week? Why did they have a difficult time believing this lady that Jesus, they all went to the tomb, they saw it was empty, and they returned back to wherever they were at before in the upper room hiding, their cave, wherever they were at. They weren't there trying to figure out what was going on. But anyway, matter of fact, what do, what do you think? Why was it difficult for them to believe the woman? This, this okay, brother, brother Joe. Oh, okay. Brother Joe. Okay. Brother mm -hmm. Joe. Yeah, go you, uh, ahead. Mr. Yes, Mr. Tasca read earlier in John 20, uh, I think it's John 20, 17, mm -hmm. where Jesus mm -hmm. told the woman, do not hold on to me. I have not yet mm -hmm. returned to my father, but mm -hmm. go down and tell the brothers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So right there, you know, they had they, the ladies had something to do. They had the brothers were down in Galilee and they were doing whatever. But Jesus said he had not yet returned to his father. Go down mm -hmm. and let the brothers let, let let them know, you know what's happening. So you asked earlier where were the where were the men? Mm -hmm. They were where they're supposed to be. The ladies were where they're supposed to be at the tomb. 
they saw they saw Jesus, and he he had showed them who he was. So, so now we we go back to the scripture, and everything. Now we know at Galilee, when the angels come down, and he said, "Why are y'all looking up?" He said, "The same one that goes up, you will see him when he comes down. When he comes, well, you know." So we 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 we, we right we in, in order. Yeah. I think. Yeah, that that's true. That's true. That's true. That's <laughs> right out of seventeen. He told yeah. them to go ahead and tell. The brothers, that's right. They were where they were supposed to be. The men were where they were supposed to be. And they were uh, for God to get the glory in everything that's going on, you know, because it was like. Yeah, but but, but also uh, the men. I think Brother Simmons was trying to say something there. Yes, yes. I said, but also uh, the men, you know, they were still mourning. <laughs> Don't forget now that, you know, the leader. Uh, Jesus Christ, you know, has just been buried, and uh, they are in isolation. You know, I mean, if you lose someone like was alluded earlier, I mean, it's very, very painful and difficult situation. So they are there, you know, in isolation, you know, waiting, and uh, don't really know uh, have a particular plan. You know, and just like all the other followers, including the women, they also forgot the things that uh, Jesus had said. You know, so it was difficult for them uh, to, to you know, take whatever they had told them. So it was some of them were like Thomas at this time, you know, doubting Thomas. So they said, oh, come on, what are you guys telling us? You know, this might not be true. It's nonsense, you know. But then... They acted on it, just like you said. You know, Peter had to take off. <laughs> you know, let me go check this thing out for myself. <laughs> it it, it mm-hmm. might just be true, you know. And they did. And when they found the linen, which is very significant uh, in the burial in the Jewish culture, uh, that meant a lot because Peter now came back. He didn't say anything, you know. But then all the things that they have been taught, and all the things that they are supposed to do, you know, are becoming clearer to them that this mission is going to be accomplished, you know. So, you know, to me that was, you know, very, very encouraging you know, to see both of them run down as the women had told them, you know, to confirm. So that's what we do in Scripture too, you know. A preacher preaches. Somebody says something to you. What do you do? You go back to scripture and then mm-hmm. confirm, you know, what they have said, you know. So I'm uh, uh good morning. Uh, this is Ed Allen. As I'm uh sitting here thinking, I the uh the men just never seem to be all in to me. Uh, when Jesus went to pray, they went to sleep. Uh, Jesus was constantly reprimanding them about things that he had told them. And uh, they kept forgetting them all along his ministry. They go to the, uh, to the mountain for the transfiguration. They see that come back down, there was disciples there that could not do a simple healing on a a kid, and Jesus reprimanded them for faith in that that instant. Uh, Just all along the way, they seemed to not to be all in. I mean, they said with their mouths one thing, and when Jesus was taken, every one of them denied him. Um. I don't know. I just see this being a slow transformation. As with us, it's a a, a, a slow maturity. But I think um, once Jesus was crucified and resurrected, I think they were slowly getting it. And then when Acts the book of Acts, when Peter did his sermon, I, 
Because I think they probably had it at that point. But, but until that time, I don't see them being too uh, devoted. Very good point. I think I love the way you brought that in because you were coming right out of Mark when he was talking with them and took them to the garden in Mark 14. And he, the last thing he told them, he told them, look, watch ye and pray, lest ye fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Flesh is weak. Right? And then he went over into yep. Peter, First yep. Peter, where he said the end is at hand. Therefore, be sober, watchful, and pray. You know? And he was always trying to get them to understand all the way to the end. That yeah. you have to be praying, you have yeah. to be sober, you have to be diligent, you have to be looking into what I'm telling you constantly. You have to be preparing yourself because, like he That's pointed it. out again, later on in Acts, until he, Peter, they start pronouncing the church in Acts what it really, really was. This empty tomb brings us back to the memorials that was of redemption, right? It's like we had to have these memorial of blood. Back right. in the first Passover, they had to sacrifice these sheep. Now Jesus has died on the cross. Now is the memorial of the blood, which are we going to take part of in our communion a little mm -hmm. bit later, as I read earlier in uh, Luke 22, about when he took the disciples up in the upper room to prepare them about the breaking of the bread the cup as the New Testament of the blood. That's the new memorial of the blood, right? For the redemption. You know, we could only been forgiven by the killing the sheep in the Old Testament, but now we have the blood of Jesus on the Christ. So if on the cross. So basically, like these disciples sleeping, uh lethargic, not really wanting to know where the body was, uh, like they say, they had a passion like the brother said, now they're scattered. Their leader is gone. They're like sheep going all over the place. Uh, emotions, uh, uh, information, uh, right. everything is taking them all different kind of ways. They're trying to ponder and uh, what they call process. All this is going on. And so, but then he kept telling them, he kept pointing to them his work. He never, ever stopped his work of trying to save inform them and prepare them and kept telling them in John that I, well, he said all the way back to the beginning, I am, you know, right. way back in Abraham, who shall, shall I say sent me? I am. And that I am is yesterday, today, and our future. Right. That's where we got to go with this Bible. The Bible is I am. Right. Uh, Joe, so anyway, uh, uh, brother oh, back to, back brother, to our lesson for a second. The brother Willie. Yes, what was that? Um, Hello? Go ahead, yeah. Willie. Okay. Um, I got a little different little input here that I just wanted to add, and maybe a little controversy, controversial. But when mm -hmm. I look at this and it says, you know, the women, they told the men, the apostle, these things, but these words seem like nonsense to them. Of course, back then, the word of women was not that important. So mm -hmm. maybe. The men that saw it, they may have believed it a little bit more. But at least, you know, Peter ran to see to verify those things. But we, we see the, to me, that, you know, the place of the women was a little below. Mm -hmm. And I look at today's church, and we kind of do in a lot of churches the same thing. You know, there's certain positions that the women cannot have a lot of church. And it's similar to me. Um, we don't exactly value women lots of times in churches the way maybe we should. And maybe that's a little controversial, I don't know. But that's kind of like what I'm getting out of it. Some of the value of women, there's certain positions in church that women cannot have. We, we try to put men in certain positions, and we don't want women there. Um, so I, I, I get that kind of similarity out of that, too, that kind of... Um, you know, when I look at these things, I try to look at what's going on today, what's happening. Mm -hmm. And um, that's something that I get out of it. The value of, of women, we still, I don't think in a lot of churches, 
value them the way that we should. Yeah. Because I think uh, um, that that's that's a valid point. And uh, at that time, I think women were less than third class citizens back at that time. They was actually property when you looked at it. Uh, but there's a crossroads here with the men that were involved and the women as a crossroad. The woman's voice was not valued. And I think to a certain degree, the men were still thinking is after all of the ministry, the three years worth of traveling around with Jesus, they still were thinking that the kingdom was going to be a brick and mortar kingdom on this earth. And I think the flesh kind of blinded them to many things that Jesus were talking about. It's because Jesus was talking about a different type of kingdom than their their minds were thinking about, I think, that combined with uh, the voice of someone that's considered to be property, uh, I think that played a great role in this. Yeah, that's both of those are very good points that the women were not, but Jesus throughout the whole thing was trying to bring to the attention of both his followers and the Pharisees and the religious leaders that everybody is of value in God's sight. And they were going to their tradition, their mm -hmm. heritage, mm -hmm. their religions based mm -hmm. on those things that I just mentioned rather than the mm -hmm. word of Jesus Christ saying he used the women in so many examples for his uh, leadership. The woman at the well, she went out and evangelized, right? Uh, the, uh, and, uh, the, the lady who uh, was in the temple at Jesus' birth, Simeon and Anna, you know, right. she was used by him. And so Jesus was always using the women to let these men know that, hey, you, uh, your whole value system is, watch my language, screwed up, you know, <laughs> and uh, you guys have to come around with it. You know, you're up here. You got to be sober to what I'm saying is what he told them back in Mark. You got to be sober. You got to understand, sit down, get away from your tradition. We in a new day now. He told him, he read that. Uh, Brother Tap read where they said, I have not ascended up yet. And see, we also have to remember that the Holy Spirit has not been sent down right. to open their eyes up yet. That's the key component they didn't have yet. Yep. They the were Holy hanging on to, to, to the presence of Jesus being physically with them, and when that was taken away, they were lost. Exactly. Mm. The key difference came in Acts when the Holy Spirit got in them. You saw Peter and the others transform. Mm -hmm. and and get on the mission because now they realize, okay, we're not following behind a physical Jesus Christ and walking around with him. He's mm -hmm. in him. And they didn't have that yet. And that's why Jesus said, not yet. Not yet. You ain't got the Holy Spirit. Just exactly. work what I'm doing for right now because you don't have the Holy Spirit. And even even telling her, don't grab on to me. <laughs> Wait a minute now. I ain't gone to heaven yet. You're going to get the Holy Spirit and my presence is going to be with you. Get back and let them know that I've risen. Because he didn't want them hanging so much on his presence and him physically being there. He knows that's how we are as human beings. That's right. So he, he had to get them not to get too attached to physically seeing Jesus be around. They needed to get his message. Yep. Because when the Holy Spirit came, they were going to have to be prepared to share that message. Amen. So that's when we see that transformation in them disciples coming. That Holy Spirit hits them. They, they, they all. That's right. And very good point. The Holy Spirit and at that point. And see, the women were in the right place, and they were... See, this is the most important thing. Why a lot of the men don't get a revelation in God's Word or illuminated or inspired in God's Word because they're not where they're supposed to be at. You know? 
They're steady, right. building laws up, building rules up, following tradition, doing everything. Mm-hmm. Instead of being in dwelling and being depth into what the Lord, being sober and being, what does it say? Drunk with the spirit of the Lord, being filled with the spirit. We right. being filled with all the world things are our phone, our technology, our YouTube, our Facebook, we're filled with everything else, but we don't have no time to be filled with the word of God, right? right. So there we have it. We're out of time. We ran over. So <laughs> <laughs> we have a good time over here. We can continue, but yeah. uh, anyone want to make some closing statements on the lesson today before we move out? Hmm. Uh, I, I, the only thing I want to say is that, you know, like uh, Brother Willie was talking about uh, the women, you know, that, uh, um, it, you know, God is, you know, is always in order, okay? His uh, plans and uh, policies, you know, and everything that he does is just, you know. Uh, there's a reason also why among the apostles, there is no woman there. So what are you going to ask God? You're going to tell him that he didn't put women there as apostles? You know? And look at all scripture. Look at Moses, Jeremiah, Nehemiah, Jonah. Just keep naming them. You know? There's a reason for that. So there's also a reason why it was women who went to the tomb. Okay? Brother Joseph already said it. They were there at the right time, at the right place. So when we look at scripture, we have to be reminded of the totality of it. Like you all said, God is God. There's no questioning. There is nothing he doesn't understand. There is nothing he doesn't see. So we have to believe him and trust him and go by faith and not by sight. Amen. And so with our conclusion to this, the empty tomb established the church for us, whereas the firstborn from the dead, Jesus Christ, when he raised up, he became the head, right? The head and the uh, head of the church. And then the body, us believers, are to follow after Christ's teaching and his ways. And so that's where we are right now. And that's where he's going to establish later on in um, Acts. But, like, um, that's about it. It's 21 minutes after. we got to get prepared for communion Sunday and everything. And um, so I guess we'll close out in prayer. And let, let us remember that uh, those ones that we prayed for that uh, – or breathed at this time that we can uh, uh, keep them in our prayers. And the other one, then I forgot to wish the happy birthday to those who are having birthdays this week or celebrating anniversaries or any events in their life. And we're all celebrating the rays of our Lord Jesus Christ this week, and we're going to celebrate that too as well. So let us say... We're going to close in prayer, and uh, I'll just do it out right now. Let's pray on out. Thank you, Lord, for another Sunday. Thank you for all this said and heard and read. And we pray that we can have the Holy Spirit to fill us and to lead us to what we're to do with these things, Father God. Let us go quickly to share this good news about the empty tomb, Father God. Let us share the... uh, Good news, Father God, and let us be evangelists that we can uh, bring folks into uh, the fold, Father God. And let us not just be uh, uh, have passion, but let us be compassionate for people as well, Father God. So, and not only for people, Father God. Let us not only be passionate for our Bible that we look at it and care for it and read it, but let us be compassionate that we can live it, Father God. That we can live what is teaching us to do and, and sharing it, Father God. That's our compassion through Bible teaching, Father God. So in Christ's name, we pray and to keep us all in your word, Father God, to let us dwell richly in it until we meet again next Sunday, Father God. We just pray that we 
can all be together again next week, Father God, without any whole things, and that we can be prepared for our next Sunday, Father God, that we can have some good testimonies about how we've shared and our Lord and Jesus with others, Father God. In Christ's name we pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Next week Thank we'll you. be talking about sinners. going to be in Luke 19. we back and back to Zacchaeus. You know, and I want to see Jesus. That's his thing. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother Joe. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, enjoyed it. Uh, enjoyed it, brother Joe and family. Oh, uh, you're welcome. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.